hello and welcome to this review of my Kedis NJ80 keyboard. Apologies if I sound a bit different from usual, but I'm recovering from a tonsillectomy I had a few weeks ago, and my throat is still a bit swollen. This was a commercial donation from Kedis themselves. They reached out to me, and I agreed, provided that they would outfit it with a specific type of switches, which I'll come back to later. I must admit that without the switches, I probably wouldn't have agreed to review this keyboard, as it seems rather standard, really. But in all honesty, it turned out to be not quite as vanilla as I thought, and it provides a nice base for some interesting observations, I think. The NJ80 is an MX Hotswap keyboard that clearly shows a common inspiration with keyboards like the GMMK Pro, which I reviewed a while ago. A compact, that's to say around 75% form factor, Hotswap chassis with a volume wheel at the top here, and with an air of a custom keyboard around it. But there are a number of significant differences between the two. In fact, that's just about all they share. I've been giving it a spin for a while amidst some other keyboards, and it's turned out to be fairly nice actually. One big difference is the price. At the time of writing, a barebones GMMK Pro is $170 from Glorious, while a barebones NJ80 is $95 from Drop, so it's almost half the price. In fact, at this price point, it's not just competitive with custom keyboards, but with many standard premiums as well. Now, I should specify, this isn't really a competitor to custom keyboards for people who like big blocks of aluminium, or aluminum depending on what language you speak. Anyway, many customs, and the GMMK Pro, are aluminium, but this uses a plastic case. But as I'll show you, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Now, of course, a solid aluminium chassis is much tougher, and it carries a certain prestige with it. It just looks and feels more impressive, just like a steel chassis one-ups an aluminium one. But this keyboard is certainly no slouch in terms of build quality. There is almost no flexion in it, and it, or at least this one, comes with a thick brass mounting plate. Total weight comes to a bit over 1 kilo, as opposed to 1.7 for the GMMK Pro, or in simpleton units, 2 pounds, 5.0377 ounces and 5 eagle farts, versus 3 pounds, 11.966 ounces and 14.2 eagle farts. So it is actually more portable than the GMMK Pro, if that's something that you care about. Something much more important than that is the acoustics though. See, I've been telling people for a long time that, like with a guitar or a violin, if you want good acoustics in your keyboard, you need something that's voluminous and not too rigid. This is especially noticeable when you compare the sound of vintage Alps keyboards with that of modern custom ones where the sound is much worse, but this principle applies to other switches as well. Of course, because most users of mechanical keyboards nowadays are used to MX type switches, the contemporary tastes of many have shifted accordingly. Because Cherry switches sound very bad, at least in my opinion, people's tastes have evolved towards keyboards that sound as flat and dead as possible in order to minimize the amount of sound that the switches make because MX top switches sound so horrible. This is the reason that many custom and high-end keyboards are made out of solid blocks of aluminium and include dampening foam, sometimes even dampeners and lube inside the switches themselves, just to shut up the awful MX racket as much as possible. This in contrast to better sounding vintage switches, which fare well in roomy, more flexible chassis that bring out their sound more. These are now sometimes called hollow sounding by modern keyboard enthusiasts because they've become used to high-end keyboards sounding flat, feeble and lifeless. It's a bit like preferring a mute to Pavarotti if you don't like music. The NJ80 is actually equipped with a small mat of dampening foam as well, and I think that actually kind of misfits the purpose. So what I'm going to do is take a switch that doesn't sound like complete arse, such as Mazeal PC clickies, and compare the sound between them in the GMMK Pro, in the Kedis, and in the Kedis without the dampening foam.
See what I mean? More clack, more bass, more better. Think about it. By the way, a look at this motherfucking chonker of a battery, 4,800 milliamp hours. I think it is a good thing that they uh, protect this battery because if that one goes, whoop, toasty. The keycaps are thick Dysub PBT, just like the GMMK Pro, but they look way nicer in my opinion. The font is better, it looks very reminiscent of Cherry font, and the lettering is in the top left where it belongs rather than in the center. Annoyingly, unlike the GMMK and many other compact keyboards, it does lack a print screen button though, and the choice of page up and page down instead of home and end seems a little puzzling, but whatever. The volume wheel is not bad, it's notched and somewhat stiff, but not unpleasant to use and it's easy to grab despite the lack of knurling on it. It comes with a replacement blue volume knob, as well as a blue spacebar for if you're going for a blue on white look instead. Speaking of look, I think it looks pretty okay. Fairly elegant and subdued, I like it. I like the way the RGB lighting reflects off of the brass plate as well. It gives it a kind of rich golden touch to it. And white and gold is a classic combination, of course. The keyboard is wireless, by the way, and it comes with its own dongle, which is conveniently tucked away in the bottom of the housing here. It's even wirelessly programmable with this little widget, possibly the most basic looking keyboard software of all time, but most of it is in Chinese and I can't figure out for the love of God how to work it, and frankly it doesn't look like they even attempted to make a workable user interface, so fuck that shit, and I gave up almost immediately. At least it's small, just 428 kilobytes, and even less than that, if you throw it away immediately. Hashtag SUPERBUY! By the way, to test the wirelessness of it, I used it to control my computer on the floor above while I was watching my new Chromecast monitor in the kitchen, which is located diagonally below it, and lo and behold, it works. Plus the volume wheel is really nice here too for volume adjustment. Actually, very useful this, it saves me having to figure out how to set up remote controls for this thing. The keyboard does power itself down when temporarily not in use, to save battery of course, including the backlight. Like another wireless keyboard I tested recently, it's sometimes a bit groggy and misses one or more inputs when waking up. I don't know how common that is among other wireless keyboards, but it's quite noticeable here. I think that's going to be a fairly unavoidable compromise you have to make in order to extend the battery lifetime of a wireless keyboard, especially one with RGB effects. By the way, they did actually have the brains to stick the charging port on the rear rather than on the bottom, like <laughs> some companies do. <laughs> yes, that's genuinely where Apple put it. Could they have stuck it in any worse spot than that? That shit made me genuinely laugh out loud. Now, onto the meat and potatoes of the video, the switches, Gateron Pro Yellows. Like I said, I specifically requested these ones, although they also had several other options available, but of course it's a hot swap chassis, so you can stick any MX pin switches in it that you'd like. The reason I went with Gap Pro Yellows is that I wanted to cover Gateron Yellows for ages, and this also allows me to cover Gateron Pro switches, so it's a nice two for one. So first the yellow bit. Now most manufacturers of MX top switches offer them in four basic colors, blue, black, red, and brown. But some, like Gateron, also offer a yellow option, which is typically a linear switch in between red and black in terms of weighting. It's weighted at 50 grams at actuation compared to 45 and 60 respectively. Believe it or not, but there was actually a Cherry MX Yellow as well, although that wasn't made by Cherry. It appears to have been made with counterfeit as well as reappropriated or stolen housings, likely by Aristotle. This one is in terrible condition because it came from a Chinese recycler, so <laughs> I really have no way to know how stiff it actually was. But in any case, Yellow and MX type switches is usually meant to indicate medium weight linear nowadays. And this is what makes it interesting to me, because I found that MX Red is too easy to actuate for me, and MX Black is too stiff, it gets fatiguing after a while. So, I was wondering whether I would get better results with yellow weighted switches, and voila, it doesn't accidentally actuate anymore. And it's not so stiff that it's fatiguing, so yes, this is a pretty optimal weighting for MX type switches for me, so that's a win. As for Gateron Pro switches, these are basically produced with fresh tooling and can pre-looped, which is nice, especially as these are still quite cheap, about 19 cents a piece. Not bad for a budget option, I'd say. Gateron in general makes pretty smooth switches, and these don't disappoint. 
It's still not as smooth as a good contactless keyboard like an Apex Pro, and I like the weighting plus adjustable actuation on this one better as well, but honestly the difference in smoothness is smaller than I had thought, and the Apex Pro is more expensive, so I'd say that if you want to work within the limits of the MX platform, these switches are a very nice choice if you like mid-weight linear. For me at least, this is probably the best in that category I've tried so far. I should note that I found that the W key, I've been playing a lot of Fallout 4, so a lot of walking there, tend to occasionally glitch and not work 100% reliably. It's not unknown for Gatoron switches to have reliability issues from time to time, but I just switched it with another switch and it was still happening, although nowhere near as much. So actually, I'm not sure whether the fault lies with the keyboard or the switches, so maybe keep reliability in mind with both of these. So, overall, what's the verdict? Well, it's a pretty nice option for a hot swap chassis, I'd say. It's not bad, it's not too expensive, well built, decent sound, good looks, just a simple, elegant, wireless, compact keyboard with decent functionality. Nothing too special, but I guess it doesn't need to be. The switches are very similarly well priced and seem to perform reasonably well. It's possible that they're not 100% reliable, but if you buy a couple of extra ones and just swap out the ones that don't work great, it shouldn't be that much of a problem. The weighting and smoothness are on point in any case. That's it for this review. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.